Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name. We know that you are God and you remain the same. You say you are God and you change not. You bless people in olden days, you are blessing your people today. You healed, you deliver in days gone by. Lord, tonight is declared as a night of supernatural deliverance for everyone. And I pray, Lord, everyone, man, woman, boy, girl, young, old, old-timers and newcomers, tonight will be a special night for everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, we're going to lay hold on your word tonight. We know that everyone is going to be made whole. In every hall and outside, in the children's section, youth section, campus section, everywhere language section. Oh Lord, I pray you will do wonders tonight in Jesus' name. I with all our brothers and sisters who are connected with us in this country, Nigeria, outside Nigeria, every country in Africa, outside Africa, those who are connected tonight, oh Lord, I just pray you will touch everyone. You will turn everybody around. Nobody will go out empty-handed in Jesus' name. Tonight, we lay hold on this word. We're going to be made whole. We know you've done it already. We're asking, Lord, that your blessing will overflow in every life. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Thank you. God bless you. We can sit down. In Psalm 11, we're looking at verse 3. Psalm 11, we're looking at verse 3. It says, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? As you look at that question, the answer that comes into your mind, which is the answer that comes into the mind of many, many people that read the Bible, is that there is nothing that can be done. Want to look at the word of God tonight on restoring the falling foundation of the righteous. Restoring, restoring the falling foundation of the righteous. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, the restorative prayer of the righteous. The restorative prayer of the righteous. Join with that. The restorative prayer for the righteous. You will pray and then prayers will be said for you. Every prayer that is prayed here tonight by you, by me, by us together, every prayer is going to be answered. The restorative prayer of the righteous. Number two, the redemptive power of the righteous. Join with that, the redemptive power in the righteous. That's a power that works on you. There's another power working inside you. And tonight, there'll be a combination Upon your life, within your life, there's going to be an explosion of power tonight in Jesus' name. Walking from outside, walking from inside, the redemptive power in the righteous and of the righteous. Number three, the reassuring promises for the righteous. The reassuring promises for the righteous we come to number one the restorative prayer remember you think about your foundation and if those foundations are destroyed if those foundations are falling every falling foundation every destroyed foundation in your life in your family is going to be restored tonight in jesus name First Kings chapter 13. In First Kings chapter 13, we're looking at verse 3. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord has spoken. 
Behold, the altar shall be rent. Every altar of idol in your family will be broken tonight. Every altar that the evil one has raised up and through that altar they're trying to destroy your life. All those altars will bring them tonight now in Jesus' name. And the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. Everything they burnt on that altar. And they thought they were born in your person. They were born in your business. Or they were born in all your inheritance. All those ashes are poured away tonight. Because a restoration is coming upon your life. In verse 4, and it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which he cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him. And his hand, which he put forth against him, dried up. Every hand stretched out against you for evil will dry up. Every hand stretched against you for destruction will dry up. All those hands that the adversaries and the enemies are stretching against you, they go to a corner, they go to a shrine, they go to the bush, they go to the forest, they go to the riverside, they go to the mountainside, they mention your name or they mention whatever you, you know, your family. And then they stretch hand towards your direction, towards the home, against your life. Those signs tonight. So that he could not pull it in again to him. Any hand that is stretched against you, against your success, against your victory, against your goodness, against your joy and happiness, against your vitality, and against your fertility, against your childbearing, against the goodness of God in your life. They are dried up in Jesus' name. In verse 5, And the altar also was rent, and the ashes poured out, from the altar according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God and pray for me. They'll come and ask for your prayer. Those people that thought they could destroy you, every step they take in trying to destroy you, they'll see that they're destroying themselves. And eventually, they might go left, right, west, east, anywhere to, see, to seek relief. They'll come down to bow down before you. So this king said, pray for me that my hand may be restored again. Let me push that king aside. Let me come to you now. That I'm going to pray for you. Anything that is withered in your life will be restored. Your paralyzed legs will be restored. Your withered hand will be restored. Your eyes that has gone out of function will be restored. Your brain that is not functioning anymore will be restored. And your spirit, your soul that is dried up. And it appears nothing is working anymore. You're almost like a carcass. You're almost like a dead man. You are restored tonight in Jesus' name. And that woman over there, you are pregnant and it appears the baby inside you is dead and dried up. I speak life to that baby. Come alive in Jesus' name. And so the man of God in verse 6, and the man of God besought the Lord. And the king's hand was restored again and became as it was before. 
you will recover everything. In Job chapter 22, Job chapter 22, I'm reading here from verse 21, Job chapter 22, we're reading from verse 21, Acquaint now thyself with him, and be at peace. Peace has come. Thereby good shall come unto thee. From tonight, after this special program, anywhere you turn, good shall come unto you. Anything that you imagine to be good, anything you call good, a wife is good, a husband is good, a job is good, progress is good, success is good, triumphant, triumph is good, overcoming is good, and being happy is good, everything you call good, health is good, prosperity is good, good shall come unto you in Jesus' name. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth, and lay up his word in thine heart. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. There's no doubt about it tonight, thou shalt be built up. There's no doubt about it tonight, your life that has crumbled will be built up again in Jesus' name. Where there is no joy, joy will come. And where there's no victory, victory will come. All your children, look at your children one by one. This one is dropping out and that one is dropping off and that one, all of them, I bring them back together. They'll be built up again in Jesus' name. I lay my hand on this, they'll not allow you to succeed. I lay my hand on that, they'll not allow you to succeed. And then you're meeting with the block walls and stone walls everywhere. All those walls of partition, all those walls of disturbance, they fall down tonight before you in Jesus' name. All you need to do, return, return, return to the Almighty. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. And thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacle. All those iniquities, they are gone in Jesus' name. Then it says, and then shalt thou lay up gold as dust. Prosperity has come. The gold of offer as the stones of the brooks. Yea, the Almighty shall be. Be thy defense. Umbrella upon your, upon your head. Everlasting arms under your feet. All around you is the wall of fire. The Almighty will be your defense in Jesus' name. And thou shalt have, and thou shalt have, and thou shalt have, and thou shalt have. Tell me plenty of silver you'll have enough and to spare for then shall thou have thy delight in the almighty and shall lift up thy face unto god thou shalt make thy prayer unto him and he shall hear thee your prayers are answered tonight your prayers are answered tonight he says thou shalt make thy prayer unto him and he shall hear thee and thou shalt pay thy vows and thou shalt also decree a sin thou shalt decree a sin you will not beg you will decree you will not plead you will decree you will not cringe you will decree there'll be the courage of the king and the boldness of the king and the power of the king and the authority of the king as you stand to pray tonight you will decree a sin and it shall be established unto thee and the light shall shine upon thy ways all those messengers of darkness i drive them away from your life all those messengers of darkness forces of darkness power of darkness i drive them away from your family in jesus name all the darkness you know in the night you see darkness in the dream you see darkness anytime you are thinking it's always darkness when you close your eyes it's like the darkness is going to swallow you up light shall shine upon thy ways restoration is coming upon you tonight in jesus name in Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4 Ecclesiastes chapter 8 
We're reading from verse 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 4. Where the word of a king is, there is power. Where the word of a king is, there is power. Where the word of a king is, there is power. It's not only the Kadnesa that they call a king, there's another king. And it's not only even Jesus, king of kings, they call king. If he is king of kings, he is the king with a capital K. And then he is the king of kings. There's a king over there. There's a king over there. Another king over there. Another king over there. Any king here tonight? I said any king here tonight? How about the queen? Is any queen here tonight? Tonight, your word will be the word of a king. Anything coming out of your mouth tonight is the word of a king in Jesus' name. And it says, where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, what doest thou? Let me show you the kings. Revelation chapter 1 verse 5 verse 6. Revelation, you are the king is talking about here. You are the king is talking about here. Revelation chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. It tells us, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us. Do you know God loves you? Unto him that loved us, yes, he loves you. And he washed us from our sins in his own blood. He has shed his blood for you. He washed your sins away. If he has not done it, just tell him. He specializes in doing that. He rejoices in doing that. Just say, you're the Lamb of God. You're my Savior. You're the final sacrifice. You're my Lord. I give my whole life to you. It's dirty as dirt can be. It's defiled as defilement can be. But you are the one to wash me. And the moment your, the hand of Jesus touches you tonight, all your sins are washed away in Jesus' name. Look at verse 6. And he has made us kings and priests unto God. He has made us kings and priests unto God. Make it personal instead of us, me. He has made me king and priest unto God. Say that again. He has made me king and priest unto God. Say that again. And where the word of the king is, there is power. Where your word is tonight, there is power. That power has come already in Jesus' name. And the prayer you pray tonight, the prayer I pray tonight, the prayer we pray tonight will be a prayer of restoration. Where there is blindness, sight will be restored. Where there is lameness, paralysis, health will be restored. Where there is HIV, AIDS, tuberculosis, or incurable disease, healing and health will be restored in Jesus' name. Where the deafness is there, there's no hearing, hearing will be restored in Jesus' name. Where there is failure, they were going to restore success in your life tonight in Jesus' name. And where it appears, you know, there's a person there, you have a hole in the heart. And when you walk a little bit, it's like you're going to pass out. Strength is going to come. The Lord is going to make that hole, heart, the, the hole in the heart. He's going to mend everything. Your heart is restored tonight in Jesus' name. You know, the person over there is like, you know, your kidneys, you, you, your belly is already big. It's because your, your kidneys are not functioning. And to go to the toilet, there is a problem. There's a restoration on those kidneys tonight. Restoration is coming tonight in Jesus' name. Because he has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. I come to number two, the redemptive power. Redemptive power, redemptive power of the righteous. The redemptive power of the righteous. I want you to understand that the righteous has power. The presence of the righteous oozes out, manifests, shines forth power. And as the Lord has made you righteous in Christ. Because everyone that comes to Christ, there's a great transaction. There's a great exchange 
the Lord gives you is so righteousness where you give him all your sin and you just stand there before the Lord it's like you're doing business with the Lord there's a great transaction and the deed is done he died for you on the cross he bore your sins already and it's as simple as Lord Jesus I give all my sins to you he says yes I get all your sins I take all your sins I've taken the punishment of your sin I've taken the pollution of your sin are taking everything the power of your sin away and then in exchange he gives you his own righteousness tonight you are righteous i said tonight you are righteous now there's power in the righteous man in the righteous woman redemptive power of the righteous look at genesis chapter 18. in genesis chapter 18 i'm reading from verse 23. genesis 18 we're reading from verse 23 and see what the lord is saying about the righteous verse 23 tells us and abraham abraham drew near and said wilt thou also destroy the righteous or the wicked will you destroy the righteous or the wicked the answer is no the answer is no if there are wicked people around you and destruction is coming upon them and you remain with the righteousness of Christ within you and upon you, you will not be destroyed with them in Jesus' name. The calamities and the disasters coming upon the wicked will not come upon you that has the righteousness of Christ. It goes beyond that. Look at verse 24. Paradventure there be 50 righteous within the city. He's talking about Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom was very wicked. Gomorrah was terrible. They were wicked people in Sodom and Gomorrah. That's the city Abraham was talking about. He said, Peradventure thou, there be 50 righteous within the city. Will thou also destroy and not spare the place for the 50 righteous that are therein that be far from thee to do after this manner? To slay the righteous with the wicked that be far from thee to slay the righteous with the wicked if you are righteous whatever is coming upon the wicked will not come upon you in jesus name you know sometimes you have you come from a large family and they say that you know your forefathers many years ago they did something and because of what they did a curse came upon the family but now you came to the Lord Jesus Christ. You gave your sins to Christ and he gave you his righteousness. Because of that spiritual transaction, you became righteous in the sight of the Lord. Now you are singled out in your extended family. You are righteous, but the rest of the members of the family, they are wicked. And then some people will tell you that because of what happened many years ago to your forefathers, great, great grandfathers, because of what happened at that time, that the curse in the family is upon you and upon your siblings. No, if you have come to the Lord, you have become righteous. Look at that verse again. That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked that be far from thee all those things are happening to the wicked people will be far from you in jesus name god makes a distinction a separation between the righteous and the wicked then it says shall not the judge of all they are do right and the lord said if i find a sodom sodom of all places a wicked city a violent city an immoral city a defiled city a city that the cup of the iniquity was full and yet in spite of that if i find in sodom 50 righteous within the city then i will spare all the place for their sakes i will spare the whole of the city wicked city because of those righteous people why don't you do some calculations? Let's say, for example, that all that uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, let's make it very small, make it like 50,000. 
And then God said, if I find 50 people there in the city of 50,000, then I will spare the whole of the 50,000. 50 and then 50,000. That means one to 1,000. That means if there are 1,000 wicked people and you are the only one that is righteous there, in the ratio 1 to 1,000, 50 to 50,000, because of you, God will spare the rest of the people in Jesus' name. But you know what the people are telling us? Those who say, they, they talk about deliverance. They tell us that if you are a righteous person, and then you have five other wicked people in that family, because of their wickedness, they say, that is why you are going through what you are going through. That the oppression is coming upon the whole family. Even though you are born again, they say that your spirit is born again. And Jesus Christ is taking care of your spirit. But your body, your brain, your business, everything concerning you, they say because you are part of the five people in that wicked family, that is why all these things are happening to you. They got it wrong. It's the reverse. Because you are righteous, your righteousness will protect you and will protect them. Give me a good amen there. And Abraham in verse 27 answered and said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which I am but dust and ashes peradventure. There shall lack five of the fifty righteous, will thou destroy all the city for lack of five? And he said, If I find there forty and five, I will not destroy it. And he spake unto him yet again, and said, Peradventure, there shall be forty found there. And he said, I will not do it for the forty's sake. And he said unto him, O oh, let not the Lord be angry. And I will speak, peradventure, there shall be thirty found there. And he said, I will not do it if I find thirty there. And he said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Peradventure, there shall be twenty found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for the twenties for twenty's sake. Understand? The righteous are already preserved. The righteous are already protected. And the Lord will not do to the righteous like the wicked, like he does to the wicked. But Abraham was not pleading for even the wicked because of the righteous people that are there. As you are here tonight, and let's say maybe somebody there is not born again. And then we have somebody is standing by your right hand side is born again. The other one by the left hand side is born again. The one in front of you is born again. The one behind you is born again. And you are the only one there not born again. That's unfortunate, but you are going to be born again tonight. I say you'll be born again tonight. And then some people will say that because of that one solitary individual that is not born again there, they will say that one wicked man, that one unrighteous man will spoil and destroy and neutralize the prayer of the five or four, five righteous people around. No, you got it wrong. It's the other way. Because of those righteous people around you there tonight, mercy is coming upon you. Because of those righteous people sitting around you there tonight, miracle is coming upon you in Jesus name. Their righteousness will transform the wicked. It is not that the wicked will transform the righteous. And we have the righteous here tonight. And I believe something good is happening here tonight. Because of Jesus and because of the righteousness that has imparted, imputed in our lives. Miracles are happening here tonight in Jesus' name. Verse 32, and he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak yet, but this once, peradventure, ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten sake. We're talking about Sodom, wicked Sodom, violent Sodom, immoral Sodom, defiled Sodom, and yet ten righteous people, God said, That's enough, that's enough. 
you understand that when you are cooking your soup and then you have pepper there you have this you have this you have a lot of uh, ingredients there and you want to put salt the volume of salt the quantity of salt is not like the quantity of all the other things salt will be the maybe the minimum of the of quantity that you put there and yet that salt will influence every other ingredient in that soup that's the righteous man is the salt there we are the salt of the earth you are the salt in your family and because of our presence in the family we're going to arrest every process of corruption every process of destruction in your family in jesus name there is a restorative power we're looking at second kings chapter 2 second kings chapter 2 and i'm reading here from verse 18 second kings chapter 2 and we're reading from verse 18 i need to tell you the background here here is elisha coming to jericho and long long ago joshua had placed a curse on anybody that would build up jericho and that curse came from the time of Joshua in Joshua chapter 6 and then it went on and on and on because somebody built Jericho again and the curse that Joshua had placed on build on the building of Jericho that curse began to take effect look at this now in 2nd Kings chapter 2 verse 18 and when they came again to him for he tarried at Jericho he said unto them did I not say unto you go not and the men of the city that's Jericho came unto Elisha behold I pray thee the situation of the city is pleasant good buildings there beautiful scenery there the situation is pleasant as my Lord seeth but the water is not and the ground barren and he said bring me a cruise of salt and he put and put salt therein bring me a new cruise and put salt therein and they brought it to him listen here was Jericho a whole city the water was bad the water was killing people and, and they couldn't do without drinking water and as they drank the water no matter what purification system they had the poison was still there because it is coming from a cursed fountain the fountain and the foundation of that city had been cursed and they were dying and there was no prosperity there was poverty because they said look at this in verse 21 and he went forth unto the spring of waters and cast the salt there in there and said thus says the lord i have healed these waters the waters in your life healed in jesus name the spring in your life healed in jesus name whatever you know elisha did not say let's go to the foundation let's go to the cornerstone of the city of of jericho let's dig it up that's what people are telling you they say you go to the village and then you go to the town you go to the house where you came from because they said there is something in the foundation of that house and because of what is in that foundation you dig it up and when you dig it up then they will give you the things to say or the prayer you will read and when you read this if it is in this direction read it three times if it is like this you read it about seven times and if it is this or this you read it in the night when everything is dead quiet they say that you know the prayer of eight o'clock in the evening is, is weak the prayer of nine o'clock is a little bit stronger then they say that when it is dead night 3 a.m and then when everything is dead quiet and then you dig up that thing and then you say this and say that 
Elisha did not have to do that and we don't have to do anything like that. Many people, because they don't understand, they go through a long, long process and then they go through many, many days. Here there was no fasting. Here there was, you know, no kind of uh, pressure they put upon themselves. Just bring a cruise and put some salt there and they gave it to Elisha and then it says he poured it there. He said, I have healed these waters and there shall not be from thence any any more death or barren or barren land no more death no more premature death no more barrenness in jesus name verse 22 so the waters were healed unto this day you'll come back with your testimony according to the saying of elisha which he spake it has happened I said it has happened. We're looking at number three now is the reassuring promises for the righteous. Reassuring promises for the righteous. The Lord is assuring you tonight there is something happening tonight that never happened before. There's a miracle coming your way tonight that never came before. And it reassures you. It tells us in Psalm 125, Psalm 125, Psalm 125. It says from verse 1, day that trust in the Lord shall be at Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abided forever. You, you are trusting in the Lord, you'll be like Mount Zion, which will not be removed, but you abide in Jesus' name. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth, even forever. Verse 3, note verse 3, look at verse 3. The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the Lord of the righteous. The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the Lord of the righteous. As you think of Egypt, Moses had a rod. But you remember, the magicians of Egypt had rods too. And with those rods, they did evil. Those sorcerers and astrologers, astronomers of Egypt, they had their rods. And with those rods, they did evil. But tonight, all the wickedness that the wicked man could conjure, could bring forth from his rod, will not come upon the righteous tonight. All the rods upon your life will say they are swallowed up in Jesus' name. The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Let the righteous put forth their hand unto iniquity. That the assurance the Lord is giving us. Isaiah chapter, 50, chapter 54. Isaiah chapter 54. I'm reading here from verse 11. Isaiah chapter 54. And we're reading from verse 11. O thou afflicted, tossed and with tempest, and not comforted, behold, I will lay thy stones with fair colors, and lay thy foundations with sapphires. I will make thy windows agates, and thy gates of carbuncles, and all thy borders shall be pleasant stones. All your borders pleasant stones in Jesus' name. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord. And great shall be the peace of thy children. You are concerned over any child of yours tonight. We'll bring them back to the very center of the provision and the mercy and the love of God in Jesus' name. The power of the Lord will arrest that child. The child that has been giving you sorrow of heart, that child from tonight will give you joy and happiness in Jesus' name. In righteousness shall thou be established. You'll be established. You'll not be moved here and there. All the things that have tried to shift you and to move you, everything will come to an end tonight. And thou, sh thou shall be far from oppression. Thou shall be far from oppression. The Lord will take oppressors and oppression far away from you. They'll be so far, you will not see them. They'll be so far away, you will not feel their power. 
they'll be so far away that the area of their magnetic circle will not reach your own area in Jesus name for thou shalt not fear and from terror for it shall not come near you behold they shall surely gather together but not by me whosoever shall gather together against you shall fall for my sake whosoever 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 from the village whosoever from the forest whosoever from the river mommy water spirit trying to gather up against you and they come to terrify you in the night and they show you all those dreams and they show you the river they show you the water and they say we are the people don't look any other direction we are the people troubling you tonight i come against them in jesus name they shall fall for thy sake now verse 17 no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment thou shalt condemn this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of me says the Lord the righteousness is of me says the Lord because of that Isaiah 41 verse 10 Isaiah 41 verse 10 Isaiah 41 verse 10 fear thou not fear thou not for I am with thee tonight I am with thee the almighty is with you the omnipotent one is with you the one that never lost a battle is with you the one that drowned all the magicians and chariots of egypt in the red sea is with you tonight and the one that turned all the curse of balaam into blessing that god that turns curses into blessing is with you tonight in jesus name be not dismayed for i am thy god i will strengthen thee yea i will help thee yea i will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness behold all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded they shall be as nothing and they that strive with thee shall perish thou shalt seek them and shall not find them even them that contended with thee they that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a sin of naught for i the lord thy god will hold thy right hand saying unto thee fear not i will help you help us come stand up in your inheritance a little one shall become a thousand a small one a strong nation i the lord will hasten it in his time the lord says i will hurry up and do it i will hurry up and do it i will hurry up and do it your miracle is running your miracle is running it's running towards you and your miracle is getting to you right now your deliverance is picking a race and that deliverance is running towards you right now your your inheritance and your healing and your deliverance and your miracle running towards you running towards you i will make case i will make case and i will do it i will do it a change has come tonight victory has come tonight triumph has come tonight and it is making haste it is making it is getting to you now it is getting to you now it is getting to you now if you are blind sight is coming to you right now if you are lame a strength is coming to those legs right now if you have tuberculosis healing is coming to you right now anything you need incredible disease is vanishing away right now because the touch of the lord the miracle of the lord is running and running and running towards your direction it is coming it is coming it is coming it is coming victory is coming to you success is coming to you healing is coming to you miracle is coming to you fruitfulness is coming to you it's coming right there it's coming right there it's coming right there it's coming right there now let it come let it come receive it right now receive it right now receive it right now blind eyes will soon open 
blind eyes will soon open and the lame will soon rise up and walk because the miracle is running your direction power is running your direction authority is running your direction it is coming it is coming it is coming receive it right now receive it right now receive it right now receive it right now power authority miracle deliverance dominion coming your way it's coming your way it's coming your way it's coming your way it's coming right now the lord is doing it right now welcome that miracle 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 miracle is coming my way power is coming my way authority is coming my way child bearing is coming my way if there's sin in your life give your sin to jesus and receive the righteousness of jesus and receive the righteousness of jesus let that exchange take place right now let that transaction take place right now let that exchange miracle miracle healing power there's a person having mental problem there you are getting healed right now all that insanity is vanishing away right now there's somebody over there they change your legs you can remove the chain now sanity is coming it has come already your miracle is running towards you your miracle is running towards you and it has come it has come it has come the one that has the soul of a long time and the thing has not been healed bringing us pause is drying up right now and the one that has the problem in the anus the lord is healing you right now he's healing you right now power has come power has come there's somebody there with deafness in the ear the lord is opening your ears right now that miracle is coming your way it's there it's there it's there it's there right now it's running your way it's coming your way miracle miracle authority and power anointing there's anointing here tonight that breaks every yoke there's anointing here tonight that breaks every yoke the fellow that has arthritis over there on your knees arthritis is going right now all the arthritis is gone now all the arthritis is gone now you can raise the leg you can move the leg you find that all the pain is gone the lord is touching you right now it's touching right now you tell the lord i receive my miracle i receive my miracle i receive my miracle in jesus name we pray your miracle has come already your deliverance has come already and that healing has come already in jesus name tonight is not just for a few people not just for one here two there three there tonight you have your own share you have your own miracle and whatever it is you need tonight i'm going to pray now when you hear that final amen if you are blind you just open your eyes when you hear the final amen they go it out there on your neck you, you look for it you'll not find it anymore when you hear the final amen the hunchback will go in jesus name when you hear the final amen you are in the wheelchair the power will come to you right there you get up and then you can begin to walk when you hear the final amen you can test that person that has deafness the ears will be already opened in jesus name and of course and of course he has touched your business he has touched your family he has touched your wife he has touched your husband and you will never be the same again in jesus name just raise up your hand you know your miracle is running towards you now your miracle is running towards you now your miracle is running 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 towards you now and at the final amen you know it is done. father in the name of jesus we thank you because of the assurance you have given us that the rod of the wicked will not fall upon the righteous the calamities of the wicked will not stay will not abide upon the righteous all the sicknesses all the infirmities all the barrenness of the wicked will not fall upon the righteous and therefore i bring all your people before you here tonight deliver them in jesus name lord i bring everyone that came here as a sinner and as they transfer their sins unto christ give them your righteousness now in jesus name let the joy of salvation come to them and let the assurance of salvation come unto them i pray oh lord that peace that passes all understanding will come in their hearts right now forgive all their sins in jesus name and now lord deliverance for everyone deliverance for everyone all the people that have felt they were under a curse under a yoke right now i send for the word of deliverance unto you 
I send the arrow of deliverance away. Be delivered in Jesus' name. All that yoke, I destroy the yoke. All the weapons of the devil, I destroy the weapons of the devil. And all the calamities that have been upon your life because of the cause and because of the yoke, I remove everything right now in Jesus' name. Lord, let the horizon be clear. Everything that is dim, everything that is dark, everything that is big in confusion, everything that is easy in their lives, clear up everything right now in Jesus' name. Remove the veil from their spiritual eyes. Lord, now I pray for that person having insanity. I command that spirit of insanity, that madness, come out in Jesus' name. And I command that epilepsy, that epilepsy, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those people that have the goiter or hunchback or any swelling in their leg, any part of the body, any ear that swelling, you have no right to be there anymore. Already, I destroy you. Already, you are withered. Already, you are dead from the root. Come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray those who have tuberculosis or those who have HIV, AIDS, and incurable disease, I send the healing virtue of the Lord upon you right now. Be delivered in Jesus' name. Be set free in Jesus' name. You are healed in Jesus' name. The person that is having the arthritis over there, I command right now, arthritis, vanish away in Jesus' name. All the pains and the joints, I command right now, the pains will vanish away. All the stiffness and the joints, vanish away in Jesus' name. I pray for that person that you know the mouth uh, brings up and uh, brings uh, forth a terrible odor and people are trying to avoid you. It's even causing you your work and your profession. And I command that that odor in the mouth come out in Jesus' name. I'm praying for that uh, fellow there. You're an adult and you're still wet in the bed at night. I'm commanding right now uh, that a uh, man, I say, be healed in Jesus' name. And the woman on this other side, you that is still wet in the bed at night, I command right now, be healed in Jesus' name. The, the, the fellow that has the kidney failure over there, I pray the Lord will touch your kidneys right now. And those kidneys will come alive. Those kidneys will function very well. And I pray that freshness will come in your body in Jesus' name. The hole in the heart of that child right there. I pray, Lord, you touch that heart and the hole in the heart. You do a creative miracle right now. Mend that hole in the heart in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for everyone here, miracle everywhere. In every hall, miracle. Brothers and sisters, miracle. Young people and campus people, miracle. Children's section, miracle. Outside, miracle. Everyone hearing the sound of my voice anywhere, everywhere now, miracle in Jesus' name. Confirm it in every life. Confirm it in every life. Confirm it in every life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Check up yourself. You see the miracle is right there. Check up yourself. Check up yourself. You were blind before. Now you can open your eyes and begin to see. And when you see the miracle, just shout praise the Lord. And we're here to rejoice with you. You are paralyzed. Or maybe your hand was withered, leg withered. Now you can stretch it out. Miracle has come there already in Jesus' name. And then that person there that has the swelling in your body, if you check it up now, the swelling is gone. And you can say, praise the Lord, we rejoice with you. And the fellow that has the mental problem, if you are the person that brought him, speak to him now and see that everything is normal. And then we can rejoice together and praise the Lord together. Check up yourself, check up yourself. The miracle tonight is, you know, miracle galore, as they say, everywhere, everywhere. Praise the Lord. My name's Adok Astukudi. I came right away from Akoko Edo Afema region just because of this program. This child has been passing one problem or the other since I gave birth to him. The problem started with convulsion. From convulsion, he was admitted to private hospital, to general hospital, to teaching hospital. At the end, they referred me to UPTH at uh, Benin. They said something has wrong, it has affected his brain. 
And since then, he has a particular sign he we made. After making that sign, the next thing is to fall. If you look at his face, it was disfigured. I said, when they said this program, I said, I'm, co I'm coming down to Lagos. I want to come and tell this program in Lagos. Since I can't, I'll be lying him down with foam there. Cannot stand up. When he stand up, within a second, he will fall. But when the man of God was praying, I believe, I said, God, I'm not going to take this shirt to a cocoa and all like this again. That I want people to hear and to see the God that I'm serving. When the man of God prayed, he started running up and down. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Put your hands together for Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. My name is Blessing Edith. I came all the way from Plateau State, Josh. I'm here to testify to the goodness of God in my life. First of all, I want to thank God for the salvation of my soul. Secondly, I want to thank God for what God has done in my life. It all happened November, on the 25th of November, when I woke up with the symptoms of stomach pain. So I don't know how the pain comes about. I went to the hospital. They keep on saying different things. I was tired. So I decided not to go to anywhere. I now decided to go to my pastor. They prayed for me, yet I don't have any faith to believe their prayers. A lot of people pray for me, but yet, to the extent I have to go to my state pastor. When I went to my state pastor, I complained to him. He asked me what was the problem, I told him. He said, okay, what you need now is a new one. I said, yes, sir. They said, your kidney is having a problem. I said, yes, sir. And what else? I said, sir, they said, I'm having sickness like cyst ovariances and appendicitis and urinary tract infection that I cannot even know. Then he said, because it was on Monday Bible study when I had our uh, Jesus was preaching. He said, if you have any problem and you go to the hospital and the hospital do not know what, what to do with your problem, go to your local pastor and let them call him on phone and only on phone prayer you will be healed. So I went to my state pastor and he called GS. And when he called GS, I was fortunate to speak with GS for the very first time of my life. And I spoke with him on phone and he asked me, how is the problem like? I told my GS. And he prayed for me. Even though he prayed for me, the pain was still there. I said, since it's in my jail that he's praying for me, God, this man is anointing man of God. That he honor his word in my life. And it was done. Praise the Lord. I could not even stand. I could not even do anything with the kidney problem. I was not even be able to do anything. When I came to the to over here to Lagos, I was still having the abdomen pain, but the kidney pain was gone. I still go back to the hospital. I checked and I checked. They say, Madam, you have cyst ovarian I said, okay, what is the solution? They say, I'll take drugs. And when they gave me the drugs, I bought the drugs. When I took the drugs, I'll be having pain all over. But since I came, started with headache, and the headache called me because I could not even stand. But God said, let's do this your own time. And I received the healing and the headache disappeared. And it now came about poaching. I said, God, what is this? I was poaching, poaching, and poaching. When I went to the hostel, the leaders there said I should go to the welfare. I said I will not go. Because I believe this poaching is all the sickness in my stomach is now washing away. I will not take any disease. I will not take anything from it. And behold, it was done. What the doctor said I should not eat, even the supermarket, they were like looking at me. Each time I'll go to buy ice cream, I'll buy anything that contains sugar to take if I will have the pain. But the pain was not there. And I went to the, they came to the hospital, I checked, they said nothing is wrong with you, your kidney is okay. And I give the glory to God Almighty. I said, his name be glorified in Jesus' name. you, oye Mobility number one, Ola Ore Street, Mafo Luku, Oja. Kini kata keri mini wajwe nyoma olon ni ashale yi. Eri mini ipe la tibi odu meta. Senyi, ese emi otun, ati ese emi osi. Om ferro, toja ki oma an romi, nikba miron, koni sheni rara. Titi wadi ashale yi, shumwa ni ashale yi. Nikba ti ba ba nikba dura funwa ati kini ati keji bend meje gisi loku to lagbara. Ikeji nipe 
bi ese yin na bi o se ndun mi to oju mi mejeji ati totun ati tosi mejeji ori ran daada sugbon ni asale yi nigbati baba n gbadura fu wa atotun atosi mejeji lo ti ri ran e ba mi olorun logo My name is Ayla Taiwo. I want to give glory to God for what um, He healed me today. Um, since I was born, I was born with a leg deficiency. That's my right leg was shorter than my um, left leg. And I've been to hospitals. They said I start surgery, but I said I should not do the surgery now. I should do it maybe like next two or three times due to some complications or whatever. But I came here this night. Um, when pastor started the a message just during the title that's when I became expectant. Then during the prayer, I really prayed and I said, I told God that Pastor should mention my case two times, which he did. And then now that I was really sure that I was healed, and then just looking at my knee, you would even you could see the um, difference that this one shorter than this one. And then after the prayer, I raised up my skirt, I saw that they were equal. I told my twin sister to. I told my two sister to see me while I work, and when I work, she said I was okay because I limp when I work. Because that's the only difference they even used to differentiate two of us. I limp when I work, but I just give God the glory that I'm fine and I'm healthy. Praise the Lord! Put your hands together for Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. Short leg grew out. Short leg grew out. Short leg grew out. And the two legs are now the same. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My name is Brother Adedu from Mapudu Garage District in Osho the group of districts under old Osho the districts. Um till about two years ago, I had no problem with health. My testimony is based on healing and health. I had no problem, but about two years ago, I just had to have some pain here, very, very excruciating. The last time it happened, I shouted in the house, and people were saying what was wrong. I went to the toilet, put, I put some water, but the thing persisted. I had to travel to London, and when I got there, they tested me and said, you have no problem. Uh, it's a question of um, wear and tear of uh, old age. I rejected it because I said, Moses never started his ministry until 80. And I'm not yet 80, so I rejected that one. So I rested, I came back. By September 5th last year, the thing reoccurred again. I started to walk half bent, and it was a terrible experience. And we tried all we could. Um, we are ready to go to India. But before then, the program in January started uh, the Miracle and Revival program. I came here, I was in Honai when the man of God prayed. I kid into it that I've received it. But the travel to uh, India was what made this uh, testimony very striking. It was a few days after the uh, miracle uh, revival program here. So I went there and I believe that, you know, already I've been touched. So when I, when I got there, the man, the doctor that attended to me, the surgeon, said uh, within five minutes, he said, you don't need any surgery. Praise the Lord. So I then asked from him, I said, what next? He said, well, to be able to convince you, you go for tests. I did 17 different tests, and the result was perfect. And that was how, through the prayers of the man of God and my uh, brothers and leaders in the district and the group, that is how I got healed without any uh, surgery. Praise the Lord. Jesus has done it. Jesus has done it. Jesus has done it. Put your hands together for Jesus. Put your hands together for Jesus. Yes, he rejected it and it was rejected. Reject that evil, it shall be rejected in Jesus' name. The Lord will not pass you by. Double miracle, triple miracle, multiple miracles upon our lives in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name tonight. What a wonderful father you are. 
Thank you, Lord, for all the things you have done. We pray, Lord, all these testimonies and miracles will be permanent in Jesus' name. And every one of us here tonight will not just hear what happens to other people, we too will be partakers of the miracle power in Jesus' name. Every promise of God right here tonight will belong to everybody. The power manifestation tonight belongs to everybody. Lord, I pray that the mighty power of God in an explosive manner, dynamic manner, will touch everyone here tonight in Jesus' name. This night of supernatural deliverance, I pray, Lord, no yoke will remain. No curse will remain. No affliction will remain. And no power of the enemy will remain in Jesus' name. Confirm your mighty power in everyone. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. We're looking at 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. I'm reading verse 8. 1 John chapter 3 verse 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. Look at the second part. For this purpose. For this reason. To this end. The Son of God was manifested. That he might destroy the works of the devil. This hour, I bring the message to you. Destroying the, we the works and the weapons of the devil. There are weapons that Satan uses in the lives of people. Sometimes it's to control. Sometimes it's to distract. Sometimes it's to afflict. Sometimes it's to destroy. Sometimes it's to take the good of your life, to take it away. All those weapons of the enemy, this night, were destroying them. The works of the devil, what he does in bringing sickness, in bringing affliction, bringing poverty, bringing disaster, bringing accident. All the works of the devil tonight in your life, they're destroyed in Jesus' name. The message, destroying the works and the weapons of the devil. Three points. Number one, the activities and the attacks of Satan. Let's recognize them. Let's know that this is of the devil. Then you know, if you know this is of the devil, you'll be able to come against it and you'll destroy it. The activities and the attacks of Satan. Number two, the authority and the ability of saints, the saints of God, the believers in the Lord, the disciples of the Lord. We have authority and we have ability, the authority and the ability of saints. Number three, the anointing and the armor of the Son. Any child of God, every child of God, we have the anointing and we have the armor of the sun. Number one, tell me number one. The activities and the attacks of Satan. I want you to look at Luke chapter 13. In Luke chapter 13, we're looking at verse 11. 13 11 it tells us and behold there was a woman that had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself you see the problem of this woman had continued for 18 years a chronic disease a spinal kind of disease she was bent over she couldn't lift up herself 
medical signs might give that disease different kinds of names but the lord recognized it as a spirit of infirmity look at verse 16 ought not this woman being the daughter of abraham whom satan has bound it was a bondage of satan it was an affliction from satan but the day she met jesus that bondage was broken tonight and you come in face to face with jesus the bondage in your life is broken the affliction in your life is taken away no matter how many years that affliction that bondage has remained there 18 years 20 years 30 years you come tonight in this divine encounter with the lord and the yoke is broken in jesus name acts of the apostles chapter 10 verse 38 acts chapter 10 verse 38 how god anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed by who? Of the devil for God was with him. That tells you then all those sicknesses that Jesus healed those blind people it was the work of the devil paralysis work of the devil all that cancer that's work of the devil and all those infirmities in the lives of people it was the work of the devil and whatever work of the devil is there tonight we come here tonight in the name of the lord to destroy that work of the devil in your body in jesus name when i mention the name of jesus in prayer tonight heaven stands at attention and all those demons all those spirits all those evil powers they will go away from your life in jesus name will command them to pack their load and go hiv aids is part of his load pack your load and go cancer is part of his load devil pack your load and go insanity brain problem is part of his work pack your load and go all that thing walking about in the body and in the brain is the is the load of the devil satan i command you back your load and go and all those hearing of voices i'm hearing this i'm hearing that and you don't see anybody is the work of the devil satan tell tell him tell him pack your load and go and he has to go in jesus name you see here it says jesus healed them all that were oppressed of the devil. We're looking at Second Corinthians chapter twelve. Second Corinthians chapter twelve. These are the activities of Satan, the attacks and the afflictions of Satan. It says in Second Corinthians chapter twelve, verse seven. Unless I should be exalted above measure, through the abundance of the revelations, there was given unto me. A son in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Here, Paul the apostle recognized the buffeting, the beating, the boxing, the pounding, the kind of son in the flesh. He knew it wasn't the work of God, it was the work of the devil. All the buffeting in your life today that brings reproach upon your life, tonight we're going to dismiss that thing. First Thessalonians chapter 2, we're reading from verse 18. The activities, the attacks, the afflictions of Satan. First Thessalonians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 18. Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again. But Satan hindered us. There are many people that will say, I had this vision. I had this mission. I had this goal. I had this assignment. I had this meeting. I had this thing I wanted to achieve. But 
something always discourages me once i start like this i'm not able to finish there is a hidden hindrance somewhere is the work of the devil don't you see that verse it says but satan hindered us somebody there you had wanted to get married and every time you are planning i want to get married i want to get you get excited about it all of a sudden everything will cool down it's like you're no more interested and satan hindered you i come here tonight that activity of satan attack of satan in your life i come to destroy it tonight in jesus name how do you think about a person that is in school we think that is the joy of a student that you know that after three years to spend here four years to spend here five years to spend here after five years i'm through i come out i go and work but when the exam is coming you've been preparing all of a sudden i'm not interested again i will take the exam next session and you yourself you defer and you delay because satan hindered you any good thing that is going to come your way there is that thing to bring discouragement and then you, you go back you withdraw from it tonight is the night of deliverance deliverance has come tonight in jesus name all the good things that should have come to you and you yourself you will hinder yourself and you know you are doing it and you say, you say I, I don't care i don't care it's later after the thing is gone you'll be regretting that thing that brings that regret perpetually in your life tonight is the night of supernatural deliverance deliverance has come in jesus name point number two the authority and the ability of saints thank god you are here tonight if you don't know you have authority authority is coming upon your life i said authority is coming your way and ability ability is strength ability is might ability is power and when there's a combination of ability and authority strength and authority skill and authority power and authority no evil power no mountain can stand before you anymore in jesus name luke chapter nine luke chapter nine i'm reading from verses one and two power and authority authority and ability luke chapter nine we're looking at verse one in luke chapter nine reading from verse one then he called his 12 disciples together and he gave them power and authority he gave them ability and authority he gave them strength and authority over all devils how many devils how many devils all devils and to cure diseases tonight we have power over all spirits over all devils even over satan tonight in any life in jesus name luke chapter 10 verse 17 and the 17 returned again with joy saying lord even the devils are subject unto us through thy name even the devils are subject unto us through thy name from tonight this will be your testimony lord even the devils are subject unto me through thy name say that lord even the devils are subject unto me through thy name say that again say it as if you really believed it in your heart you are no more subject to the devil the devils are subject unto you you are no more under the power of the devil the devil is under your power in jesus name the devil is no more on top of you you are now on top of the devil in jesus name they came rejoicing they came with celebrating they came giving testimony lord even the devils are subject unto us through thy name and he said unto them i beheld satan as lightning 
fall from heaven and behold I give you power behold he gives me power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy well read the rest yourself tell me out loud and nothing shall by any means hurt me it will not hurt you again in jesus name mark chapter 16 verse 17 and verse 18 and these signs shall follow them that believe i'm one of them i said i am one of them and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues they shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them they shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover where are the hands who are going to lay on the sick i anoint those hands again i anoint those hands again believe this believe this believe this this hands that you see look at that hand now look at it look at it look at it yourself this hand that you're looking at now you will lay it on the sick and they will recover in jesus name is the authority the lord has given you and that authority will come in full force in full power this very year in jesus name now look at acts chapter 19 acts chapter 19 reading verses 11 and 12 authority and ability giving to the children of god the saints of god in acts chapter 19 verse 11 and god wrought special miracles by the hands of paul and god wrought special miracle by the hands of it's no more paul paul is gone who is this now who is this now tell me your name and god wrought special miracles by the hands of that's you there it will happen in jesus name so that from his body were brought unto the sick and ashes and aprons and the diseases departed from them even the people that wash your clothes while they are washing your clothes evil spirits will pass away from them diseases will get away from them in jesus name you know you are going and then your anchor drops down and then the person somebody tries to help you and he picks up your anchor to say this is your anchor sir before you get that anchor back they are healed already because it says anchor and aprons they were taken from the body of paul and now it is you it has come to your turn and the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them it is done in jesus name romans chapter 16 romans chapter 16 we're looking at verse 20 it says the god of peace shall bruise satan the god of peace shall bruise satan the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Under your feet shortly. Under your feet shortly. I'm coming back to that. I'm coming back to that. I'm coming back to that. I'm looking at Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. I'm still coming back to Romans chapter 16. There's a connection here in Genesis chapter 3. And I'm reading here from verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head. That's what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. That when Jesus said, it is finished, he gave the devil a spiritual, deafening, and destructive, technical knockdown and knockout. It knocked him off. It, it became, that's how he came out of his senses because and has not recovered since then. And now it is your turn. The same way that Jesus bruised the head of the devil. When you mention the name of Jesus, that same Satan will be bruised under your feet in Jesus' name. 
come back now come back now to romans chapter 16 and we're looking at verse 20 it says and the god of peace what does that mean the god who gave you peace is salvation who gave you peace in your soul who gave you peace that passes understanding that same god is the one that will subdue the devil subdue satan under your feet in jesus name and then you say shortly shortly what does that shortly mean in a few minutes shortly in a moment of time shortly very soon very soon when you stand up tonight you are standing on the head of the devil you are standing on top of all your problems because God himself, the God of peace, shall put Satan under your feet shortly. It will happen in Jesus' name. Number three, the anointing and the armor of the sun. The anointing and the armor of the sun. Do you remember from the day, from the moment, David had the anointing? He had the anointing in chapter 16. Immediately he had that anointing in chapter 16. When Saul had the challenge of mental problem, demonic problem, this uh, David, when the same chapter, he went there when he played upon the harp, all the evil spirits departed from Saul. And then the next chapter, chapter 17, when Goliath showed up, because of the anointing that came upon David, he was able to destroy the power of the Philistines, that he is Goliath. And tonight, anointing is coming upon you. That's the anointing that will break every yoke. And we have mighty anointing here tonight. Every problem in your life will be taken away in Jesus' name. Let me show you the anointing. You have that anointing already. Second Corinthians chapter, chapter 1. Second Corinthians chapter 1. And we're reading from verse 21. Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21. I'm going to join verse 20. 20 and 21. For all the promises of God in him. A yea, and in him, amen, on the glory of God by us. All the promises of God will be yes in your life. I said all the promises are yes in your life. All the promises are amen in your life in Jesus' name. That's why I said when we pray and you hear the final amen, you know that amen is yours. That amen is yours. It means so let it be. So let it be. So let it be. It is done in your life in Jesus' name. 21. Now he which establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us, has anointed us, has anointed us, is God. That is, Paul the apostle was saying, it is God himself that has anointed us. Samuel anointed David. Look at the result of the anointing. Samuel anointed David. Look at the effect of the anointing on his even playing musical instrument. Look at the effect of the anointing on the sling and on the stone. But now, Almighty God himself has anointed me. Almighty God himself has anointed you. This anointing will break every yoke will destroy every infirmity in your life in Jesus name Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27 Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27 the anointing that breaks every yoke is here today the anointing that destroys every work of the devil is coming from the pulpit here coming to you straight now in Jesus name Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27 and it shall come to pass it has come to pass already in that day that his body shall be taken away from off thy shoulder that heavy weight on your shoulder is taken away that heavy load on your head is taken away that heavy load on your back bending you down is taken away in Jesus name that heaviness on your chest is taken away in Jesus name the woman that has been pregnant for more than nine months and it's like, you know, you're already counting more than 10, 12, 11, 12 months and the load is still there, the pregnancy is still there. Go back home and deliver in Jesus' name. It says, and then it says, and it's yoke from off thy shoulder and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. 
the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing there is anointing here tonight and every yoke in your life is destroyed in jesus name remember point number three is the anointing and the armor the anointing and the armor the anointing and the armor ephesians chapter 6 ephesians chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 11 ephesians chapter 6 verse 11 put on the whole armor of god that she may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil now you will stand i said now you will stand you know before the wind will blow and blow you down the storm will come and blow you down and all the challenges of life will come and put your back on the ground but from today you will stand you will have a backbone to stand the courage to stand the conviction to stand and the faith to stand in jesus name put on the whole armor put on the whole armor of god for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers all those principalities and powers tonight they're destroyed in jesus name against the rulers of the darkness of this world all those uh, you know the chief of this and the leader of this and the champion of this and the head of that and the principal of that all those rulers of darkness all those rulers of the dark powers we destroy them tonight in jesus name against spiritual wickedness in high places wherefore take unto you the whole armor of god that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand you will stand like a conqueror you stand like a champion stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all above all above all take the taking the shield of faith this is for your protection you are protected in jesus name do you know from tonight no arrow of the devil will be able to penetrate it your body in jesus name no arrow of the devil will be able to penetrate it to your eyes in jesus name from behind you'll be protected in front you'll be protected above you'll be protected anything they send from any village any riverside will never get to you in jesus name the power of the almighty god will bring down that arrow before it gets to you in the mighty name of jesus above all taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench how many friday dance how many tell me how many tell me all the funny darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god thank god tonight is the destruction of the works and the weapons of the devil in jesus name any stronghold in your life right there tonight i come against it any evil power in your life tonight i come against it second corinthians second corinthians chapter 10 second corinthians chapter 10 verse 4 for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through god we have mighty weapons here tonight i said we have mighty weapons here tonight that mountain in your life that you know you've been trying to use a shovel a shovel to remove the mountain that's why the mountain has been there i come with a bulldozer tonight i come with great caterpillar tonight and then when you hear that final amen that mountain is gone and when you hear the amen of the people of god you will know that that stronghold in your life will bring it down in jesus name because the weapons of our warfare they are not carnal but they are mighty through god to the pulling down pulling down pulling down everybody say pulling down, pulling down. say that again pulling down of strong holes pull down the strongholds pull down the strongholds i said we're pulling down the strongholds casting down we're pulling down we're casting down we're pulling down we're casting don't you see the thing is in your head i bring it to the ground the sin is your body i bring it to the ground the sin is your brain i bring it to the ground we cast down imaginations and every high sin that exalted itself against the knowledge of god and bringing into captivity they thought they'll bring you into captivity before but you now you are the one that will bring them into captivity 
every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now the time has come. Say the time has come. Time pulling down. And the time of casting down. And the time of rooting out every plant the Heavenly Father has not planted in your life. This is the moment we're going to root it out in Jesus' name. All those strongholds of the devil in your life, in your family, on your wife, or your husband, or your children, or your parents, we're pulling them down, casting them down tonight in Jesus' name. All those seeds of hatred, the seed of destruction, and the seed of defeat that the devil is bringing your family and bringing in your business, we're rooting everything out right now. Any plant the Heavenly Father has not planted in your body, has not planted in your wife, has not planted in your husband, has not planted in your family. Look at husband and wife that loved each other before they couldn't live without seeing each other. But now the hatred and you are backing each other. I bring that hatred away, the stronghold of the devil, away from your family in Jesus' name. Get up now, get a like militant soldiers of the Lord. It's time to cast down. It's time to pull down. It's time to root out that plant the heavenly father has not planted in your life in your family root it out root it out root it out pull it down pull it down it must not be there it must not be there any power of the devil any activity of the devil any attack of the devil any affliction of the devil tonight is the night of pulling down tonight is the night of casting down Tonight is the night of rooting up and rooting out and throwing away all those plants the Heavenly Father has not planted in your life. Sickness, root them out. Affliction, root them out. Infirmity, root them out. Oppression, root them out. Captivity, pull them down. Stronghold, pull them down. All the things the devil has been using to disturb you and to hinder you. And all those afflictions and attacks of the enemy, pull them down and cast them down. Tonight is that night. We have the authority, we have the power. We have the authority, we have the ability. We have the authority, we have the strength. We have the authority and we have the bulldozer to bring everything down that is negative in your life. All the seeds of failure, I root them out of your life. All the seeds of defeat, I root them out of your life. Tonight is your night to come out of that prison. Come out of that cage. Come out of that captivity. Come out of that infirmity. Come out of that sickness. The Lord has come to show you His power tonight. His glory tonight. The works of the devil destroyed. The weapons of the devil destroyed. There's enough anointing here tonight to root out, to pull down, to cast down every work of the enemy in your life. This is your night. It shall come to pass. It has come to pass. It shall come to pass, it has come to pass. It shall come to pass, it has come to pass. Casting down, pulling down, rooting out. Every plant the Heavenly Father has not planted in your life. Tonight you are delivered, tonight you are set free, tonight you are liberated. The power that sets free is here tonight. The power that cast down all those imaginations, they are here tonight. Activities of Satan will come down. Attacks of Satan will come down. The afflictions of Satan will come down. We have the authority, we have the ability. We have the anointing, we have the ammo. This sign shall follow all of us that believe. This sign shall follow the believing ones. This sign shall follow. This sign shall follow. This sign shall follow. In his name, we cast out devils. In his name, we bring healing to you.
in Jesus name we pray now your time has come I said your time has come every mountain will be moved away every affliction will be moved away every sickness will be moved away all the activities of the devil in your brain all the activities of the devil in your family tonight i cast them down in jesus name i want you to look at whatever it is in your life that needs to be cast down whatever it is in your life that needs to be pulled down whatever it is in your life that is referred to as a stronghold this is the last time you are going to see that thing these Egyptians that you see tonight, you will see them no more forever in Jesus' name. Pulling down. Pulling down. Pulling down. Casting down. Casting down. The time has come. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? Every plant the Heavenly Father has not planted in your life, your spiritual life, your family life, your physical life, every plant the Heavenly Father has not planted. It's time for us now to root everything out. You'll not find them again in Jesus' name. You want to raise up your hand and if you have any challenge, your body lay the other hand in that part of your body, casting down, pulling down, rooting out. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come at this time to do what you have called us to do. That every stronghold of the enemy in the life of any child of God here, I cast them down in Jesus' name. The afflictions of Satan, the attacks of Satan, all the activities of Satan, hindering the people from making progress, this time now, I cast them down in Jesus' name. All the hindrances of your life that will not allow to make progress. Lord, in the strength of the Lord, in the might of the Lord, I pull everything down right now in Jesus' name. Evil spirit, come out of that place in Jesus' name. All that evil power, come out in Jesus' name. The mountains on your back, the mountains on your chest, the mountains in your soul, the mountains in your spiritual life, not allowing you to make progress, a lot of vows, a lot of consecration, a lot of decision, a lot of intention, a lot of I want to, I want to, but this load is hindering you. The stronghold is hindering you. You stronghold of the devil, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. You get money, you earn money, but it's all drugs, all hospital. You are out and in and in and out until you finish spending the money. They will not leave you alone. All that wastage in your life, I pull them down right now. I cast them down right now. You devil, with all your activities there, come out in Jesus' name. The person there that you wanted to get married, but HIV will not allow you to get married. You go for test now, they say it's positive. Test now, it is positive. Go to another place, positive. I reverse that thing in your life. You mountain of HIV AIDS, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. I pull down that stronghold of the devil in your life, in hindering your marriage, in Jesus' name. That child that was born with a particular deformity, that thing that you were born with is a stronghold. And it's hindering you from making progress. And you're always thinking of that. You're revolving around that. Right now, tonight, at this moment, I come against that thing you were born with. And I pull down that stronghold. I cast down that stronghold. And I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Somebody you offended long ago placed a curse on you. There's somebody I'm talking about, and since that time, you said, hey, that's nothing, that's nothing. And then you use bold face. But do you know that everything that fellow said, you'll not be able to do this, you'll not do this. You have met that failure every crossroad, every, every inch of the way. Tonight is the night of your deliverance. Lord, I cancel that curse. I break that yoke. 
I destroy that curse and that utterance of the enemy in Jesus name I release you now into the success I release you into prosperity I release you into all that God created for you to do in your life in Jesus name now I pray for everybody Raise up your hand everybody Oh Lord from the first hall to the last hall Outside, inside, in the middle Left, right, anywhere they are now And those who are far away Who are connecting with us with satellite Lord I pray right now Everything that is the work of the devil in their lives Everything the work of the devil in their body All those works of Satan All those activities of Satan I come to destroy them now in the name of Jesus be destroyed in Jesus name all the tiredness all the weakness all the failure all the defeat all the poverty everything that has come a reproach in your life I command you come out in Jesus name Lord touch everyone Touch everyone. Get them out of this pit of poverty, out of this pit of need, out of this pit of scarcity. In Jesus' name. Blessing on every one of you. Miracle on every one of you. Deliverance on every one of you. Healing on every one of you. Confirm it in every life. In Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.